You've finally done it. After years of adding movies and shows to your queues, you've officially run out of things to watch on Netflix. You've also exhausted your entire backlog of books and you've even run out of cereal boxes to read. So you're left roaming the streets in search of entertainment. That's when you see a worn looking flyer stapled to a nearby telephone pole. It's an ad for a local community theater production of a play you've never heard of. A play called The Hanged King's Tragedy. Normally, you wouldn't think of yourself as much of a theater person, but something about the art on the poster grabs you. There's a strange figure on the poster, its face shrouded, its body wrapped in a web of chains. Your curiosity gets the better of you, and you check the performance date. To your pleasant surprise, opening night is a week from now, and you don't have anything planned. You've made up your mind. You're going to attend a live performance of The Hanged King's Tragedy. It's going to be the first live play you've ever seen, and little do you know, it may also be the last. Because The Hanged King's Tragedy isn't just any old play. It's a powerful and deadly mimetic hazard that may be one of the gateways to an even more dangerous being. It's known to the SCP Foundation as SCP-701, so take your seats. Be sure to read your programs thoroughly and prepare for the dark and terrifying tale of the Hanged King's tragedy and the wave of death and destruction it causes in its theatrical wake. But how could you know any of this? While you head home to make dinner, looking forward to seeing the new play next week, the local thespians are hard at work performing dress rehearsals. The director, one Marcus Fitch happened upon a copy of the play while looking for Carolinian theater that's a little more family-friendly than some of the Shakespearean classics. When he'd first discovered the Hanged King's tragedy on a theatrical forum, it was described as being similar to Shakespeare's Hamlet and Titus Andronicus, but the violence was largely offstage and implied, with a lot of the play's nastier elements glossed over, perfect for audience of all ages. Given the fact that performances of The Hang King's tragedy tend to be mass casualty events, for reasons you'll soon see, the Foundation does everything they can to control the spread of the play's script. All copies are kept in a triple locked vault in a secure Foundation archive, which currently includes two copies of the original publication that are dated to the year 1640, 27 copies of the 1965 trade paperback edition, 10 copies of a 1971 hardcover printing, 21 floppy diskettes containing the play's script, and one SVHS video cassette tape containing a live taping of one particularly infamous incident. However, this seemingly does little to prevent new performances of the Hanged King's tragedy from occurring. The text of the play continually pops up online, often under different or misspelled titles, preventing Foundation web crawlers from keeping track of them all. Nevertheless, the Foundation does everything in its power to detect and stop performances before they can go ahead. The danger of putting on or even viewing a performance of the Hang King's tragedy cannot be overstated. It's believed that, in the almost 300 years since its original publication, it's claimed 10,000 lives through performances at the very least. And if you're in attendance, dying quickly is one of the better outcomes. The origins of this mimetic virus are just as mysterious as the power that seems to drive its effects. The play never had a declared author, and the publisher, one William Cook, disappeared from all historical records after the play's publications. Performances have been varied over the 300 years the play has been active. It's been spotted everywhere from British university drama troops to American high school plays. In what could have been an even more disastrous tragedy, a television adaptation of the play was almost broadcast by the BBC before the Foundation stepped in and put a stop to it. While its containment classification is currently Euclid, scientists who have studied the play have campaigned strongly to upgrade the Hang King's tragedy to Keter class, on account of its unpredictability and tendency to manifest across the globe, with incidences appearing decades apart. While members of the O5 Council are skeptical, some researchers even believe that given a wide enough exposure, the Hang King's tragedy could cause a dreaded XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. It is that dangerous. At this point, you're probably wondering, what exactly is the Hang King's tragedy? 
What's the play even about? As the name suggests, the play is a tragedy and takes place over five acts during the Carolinian era, portraying the drama of the royal court much like a number of plays from that time did. It takes place in the city of Serco, the capital of the mysterious fictional kingdom of Trinculo. The focal point of the play is the conflict between Gonzola, the illegitimate king of Trinculo, and Antonio, the true heir to the throne. Before the start of the play, the previous king of Trinculo, King Seforza, had been betrayed and murdered by Gonzalo. Gonzalo led Seforza into the woods, where he and his men subdued the king and hanged him from a nearby tree like a common criminal. Hence the Hanged King's tragedy. However, Gonzalo is trying to keep his part in the king's murder a secret to keep the throne for himself, but his guilt-stricken wife Isabella threatens to spill the secret of Seforza's murder. While Antonio tries to uncover the truth of what happened in the woods, Gonzalo, in true Shakespearean villain style, plots further murders of his co-conspirators and loose ends to keep his dark secrets safe. This is where the play gets a little gruesome. One enemy, Gonzalo had killed and cooked into a stew. He then intends to use this stew to murder his entire court with the help of an effective and undetectable poison he was given by the mysterious ambassador of Alagada. Though you'll be pleased to know that this tragedy has somewhat of a happy ending. In the end, Gonzalo is exposed and Antonio claims his rightful place as King of Trinculo. Unlike his predecessor, Antonio decides to show mercy, and Gonzalo is exiled to a monastery for life rather than being executed for his murderous ways. The heroes are rewarded, the villains are punished, and all the deserving parties live happily ever after. At face value, nothing seems off about the play. If you're familiar with other works of the era, you might even find yourself getting bored while reading it. How can something this… normal be the curse play that claims so many thousands of lives? But this play's unassuming nature only serves to make it more dangerous. It doesn't appear that the mimetic hazard is caused by simply reading the play. Like all good theater, it only truly comes to life on stage. And your local production of The Hang King's Tragedy is no exception. As your community's amateur actors study and rehearse the play, making sure to commit every scene, every line, every single word to memory, they don't notice the little things that, to an outsider, might seem a little off. Occasionally during group dress rehearsals, actors will veer from the script. And we're not talking about flubbed lines or simple improvisation, no. Actors will at times seem like they're reading from a completely different script, and their fellow performers will respond in kind. The play lulls you into a false sense of security. Stagehands, crew members, even the director all believe they're performing the play exactly as it was originally written. Okay, so that's not so bad. A play that changes itself. But things are going to get worse from this point. Much, much worse. But hey, why let a deadly anomaly ruin your evening plans? You've been looking forward to seeing this play all week, and you couldn't seem to get that figure from the poster out of your mind. You have no idea that this entity is wanted by the SCP Foundation, and that its designation is SCP-701-1. All you want is an unforgettable theater experience, and you will certainly get one. It's a packed house. Mm. Not an empty seat in sight. The house lights dim and the curtain opens. Act 1 is quite normal, with all the backstabbing and royal court intrigue you'd expect. You actually feel yourself getting a little bored. A big yawn escapes your mouth. You're thinking that maybe this was a big mistake, and you might sneak out between acts, when just then, you see it. In the final scene of Act 1, you see the shrouded figure lingering in the background against the curtains. He seems so still, he's almost like a shadow. But as each act seems to run into the next, he becomes more prominent. The rest of the cast never acknowledges him as they deliver dramatic monologues, but he's always there. Finally, the play reached Act 5, the grand banquet scene where it all comes to head. Gonzalo is preparing to poison his dinner guest with his cannibal stew, while Antonio and his allies plot to reveal his terrible crimes and dethrone him. You find yourself so gripped by the drama of it all, you almost didn't notice that the shrouded figure of SCP-701-1 was standing right among the actors now. 
While unbeknownst to you, the actors have been deviating from the scripted story this whole time, things are about to really take a turn for the horrific. SCP-701-1, who is now known to the other performers as the Hanged King, produces a blade from thin air and passes it to the actor playing Gonzalo's wife. The actors on stage suddenly become entranced. They attack and restrain Gonzalo, and a noose drops down from somewhere above the stage. The actors proceed to ritualistically hang Gonzalo before the actor playing his wife stabs him to death, all while chanting, Blood for the Hanged King. You should be horrified, but you're not. You don't even feel like yourself anymore, and you're loving everything that's happening. On stage, a series of other nooses fall from above. Each actor grabs their own noose and the cast repeats blood for the hanged king before sacrificing their lives to the shroud-wearing monster. If the carnage stopped there, it would be bad enough. But this play doesn't just drive its players to acts of violent insanity, it pulls in the audience too. Before you know it, you're pulled into a vicious brawl with your fellow theatergoers. There's biting, clawing, punching, people hitting each other with chairs like it's a wrestling cage match. It's such a frenzy of random senseless violence that the building can't contain it anymore. You and anyone else who isn't dead already spilled out onto the streets and start attacking everyone you can get your hands on. It's transformed from a pleasant night out at the theater into a full-blown riot. Even the police sent in to control the situation are overwhelmed. It isn't until the SCP Foundation sends a number of mobile task forces trained in advanced crowd control that the situation finally begins to de-escalate. But you don't care. Even when large men in Foundation tactical gear are holding your arms, you still try to bite and kick. The effects of the play normally wear off after around 24 hours, but until then the infected, including you, are just rage-fueled monsters. In the end, it takes four adult men to properly restrain you. You'll feel the bruises from their nightsticks tomorrow, but now all you feel is hate and violence, and a single-minded devotion to something out there that you couldn't possibly comprehend. And the whole time you're screaming one thing over and over again. Blood for the Hanged King. Now go watch SCP-610 Zombie Plague, The Flesh That Hates, and SCP-3999 I Am At The Center Of Everything That Happens To Me for more horrific stories from the files of the Foundation.